Hi everyone. I wanted to take a few minutes to go over the worksheet that you had the other day. Um, and I'm just going to kind of go through them. And then if you have any questions, feel free to take and um, send me an email or ask your neighbor if they know the answer. All right. So problem number one, five, two non-negative numbers whose sum is nine. So the first thing that I'm thinking of right now is I'm going to have two numbers. So X and Y, I'll just call them. One of them is X, one of them is Y, and they add together to be nine. And so that the product of one number and the square of the other number is a maximum. All right, so I'm clearly going to have to come back to that. Let me go back over to this here. I need two numbers. The first number I'm going to call is X. And my second number is going to be, and look at the other numbers, Y right? But what if I solve y here and I subtract x from both sides? It's the same thing as 9 minus x. So I'm going to use the x and the 9 minus x when I go to do this piece here. So to find the product of one number and the square of the other number and to find when that is a maximum. Okay, well, I could have also, let me put this here, or I could have the square of the first number times the second number. You know, I could have it either way. I guess one of the things that you might want to ask yourself here is when you go to take the derivative, which one would you rather take the derivative of? Okay, so, you know, that that could, you know, change how you do things. When I did it, I actually used this one, but I also on my paper noted that this here would probably be a little bit easier because you could just take and distribute this number in, giving you 9x squared minus x cubed. Okay, so I could let this here be my function, and then when I go ahead and take the derivative of the function... I get 18x minus 3x squared, set it equal to zero, and factor. And so let's see, I factor a 3x out. I end up getting 6 minus x. So x equals zero or x equals 6 with this. Okay, so I thought my recording was going, but it wasn't. But here, when I set them both equal to zero, I got two answers. But when I use my number line, it shows me that the maximum is when x equals six. So my x equals six is one of my numbers. And then I plug it in nine minus six, which is three. It gives me three and six. For those of you that use this one here instead of the one that I used, um, your X came out to be three. And then when you plugged it in to get the second number, nine minus three came out to be six. So either way, whichever way you do it, you still are going to get the correct answer. All right, next, problem number two, build a rectangular pen with three parallel partitions. So that might be kind of difficult to understand. It has three parallel partitions. So think about three lines there that are parallel to each other. 
Using 500 feet of fencing, what dimensions will maximize the total area of the pen? So they mentioned it's a rectangular pen. So imagine if you start with a rectangle and then you have these three parallel partitions um, in there. So I'm going to let that be my X. Each one of these are the same length. And I need to make sure and put fencing on each of these so that I actually have two separate pens for two different sets of animals. And then up here, I could call this Y. And that means this side down here is also Y. So that's that entire side from the beginning to the end right there. All right. So that means the perimeter of this for this fencing is going to be X plus X plus X plus Y plus Y. So I have 500 feet of fencing equals 3x plus 2y. And probably what I would do is solve to get y by itself right here so I can get this side in terms of x. So 500 minus 3x equals 2y. And then divide both sides by 2, which I'm going to divide each term here by 2. I get 250 equals, or sorry, minus 1.5 is uh, x is equal to my y. So this side right here is also 250 minus 1.5x. So the next thing says, what dimensions will maximize the total area of the pen? So that's this whole rectangle. The area of a rectangle, remember, is length times width. So for this, it's going to be x times 250 minus 1.5x. When I distribute the x, I get 250x minus 1.5x squared. And then take the derivative and set it equal to zero. So as you're watching this video, remember, feel free to stop it, make corrections on your paper, uh, because I will go through it pretty quickly. But make those corrections so that when you go to take your test and do problems like these, um, they'll be corrected in your head if you happen to make a mistake on them. All right, so here we go with the derivative. We'd have 250 minus 3x. Set that equal to 0. 250 equals 3x. And divide both sides by 3. So x equals either 250 over 3 or 83 and a third if you want to write it that way. But do not write 83.3. Okay, um, and this here, what was this? This was in feet. So that means each one of these here, these parallel pieces is 83 and a third feet. So now what we have to do is find what these um, lengths are here. So we have um, 250 minus 1.5 times 250 thirds which I would probably rewrite my 1.5 as three halves because then the threes will cancel here, giving me 250 minus 125 because 250 divided by two is 125, which gives me 125. So my dimensions are 83 and one third feet. Oh, that's inches, sorry. Let me just write feet by 125 feet. All right, next. A container is in the shape of a right circular cylinder. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a picture of my right circular cylinder. And what I know about a right circular cylinder is it has a height of H and a base radius of R. It has no top, it says. So that means this here does not have a top. It's completely open. And a surface area of 3 pi feet squared. So if the surface area equals 3 pi, think of the formula for the surface area of this. Normally, we have a top and a bottom. So we have 2 pi r squared. But right now, we only have a bottom. So that's a pi r squared. And then when we unravel this Right here, we end up with a rectangle that has a base of 2 pi r and a height of h. So the area of that rectangle is 2 pi r h. And we're say, being told that the surface area is 3 pi. So 3 pi equals pi r squared 
plus 2 pi r h, like so. And then it says, what height and base radius will maximize the volume? So what this is referring to is I need to find V prime, but first I have to set up a formula for volume. Volume is the area of the base times the height. And it looks like over here, it'd probably be easiest for me to get H by itself since there's only one of them. And so I'm going to start by subtracting the pi r squared from both sides. So 3 pi minus pi r squared equals 2 pi r h. And then from there, divide by 2 pi r. And so I could do this to each term, 2 pi r, 2 pi r, or I could have done the entire side. So h equals 3 over 2 r. And then for this one here, minus the pi cancels and one of the r's cancels, r over 2 equals h. All right, and then let's go ahead and take and pop that in up here for this h. So I have volume equals pi r squared times 3 over 2r minus r over 2. And I am going to distribute this to each to simplify it as much as possible before taking the derivative. When I distribute this to here, one of the r's cancels. I end up with 3 pi r over 2. And when I distribute here, I get minus pi over 2 r cubed. So now let's go ahead and take the derivative. This is r to the first power, so when you have a coefficient multiplied by that, it's just 3 pi over 2. Here the 3 multiplies out front, 3 pi over 2, and knock it down by 1, and then set it equal to 0. It looks like both of these terms have a 3 pi over 2, so as I bring it up here, I'm going to say 3 pi over 2 times, now if I divide each, by that, I get 1 minus r squared equals 0. And this here factors uh, into 1 minus r and 1 plus r. And so when I set this equal to 0, r equals 1 or r equals negative 1. But we know that in a picture like this, you can't have a negative radius. And so I'm going to cross that one off, meaning my r is going to be 1. But then I also have to find H. So I'm going to come back over here to this H formula. So H equals 3 over 2 minus 1 over 2, which is 2 over 2 or 1. So I have R equals 1 foot and H equals 1 foot. So hopefully you can see that as I'm doing these, I have completely done them without a calculator. Okay, and that would be what you want to try to do. Okay, you want to try to do as much without a calculator as possible. All right, the next one, problem um, number five here. It says um, a sheet of cardboard is three feet by four feet. All right, so I have a sheet of cardboard that is three feet by four feet will be made into a box by cutting equal size squares from each corner and folding up the four edges. So here I have these equal squares that I'm cutting from each corner. And what that's going to do is then when I fold this up, it's going to make it so that doo -doo 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 -doo, these squares are gone, but I end up then with a picture of a box that looks like that, where this X that was cut out is the height of the box, where this side right here is only this part from here to here. So this was X and this was X and the whole thing was four. So that means this guy here is four minus two X. You had four and you took two X's away. 
And then the same goes for here. I only have the box width is from here to here. And so each of these were X. And so it was three minus the two X, so three minus two X. So for this right here, the volume of this box could be X times four minus two X times three minus two X. And when I take and multiply it together, I'm going to FOIL these 12 minus 8 and minus 6 is minus 14x, and then plus 4x squared, and then distribute the x. So I have 12x minus 14x squared plus 4x cubed. Or many of you would even take the time to flip it around because you don't like the higher power over on the right side. Okay, and so now if I want to find the largest volume, it means I need to find V prime. It's I need to find the derivative of the volume. So here we go. I get 12x squared minus 28x plus 12, and I'm going to set that equal to zero. Now on your quiz, this factored nicely for you. On this worksheet here, it does not factor. You could factor a 4 out to get 3x squared minus 7x plus 4. Or, sorry, plus 3. But factors of 9 never give you 7. So because of that right there, it does not factor, and we need to use quadratic formula. So I have a equals, and I'm going to use the three here. I'm going to use the smaller numbers, what's inside here. B equals negative seven, and C equals three. So we have X equals opposite of B plus or minus square root of B squared minus four times A times C, all over two A. So this gives me X equals seven plus or minus. This is nine times four, which is 36 and 49 minus 36 is 13. I cannot take the square root of that, okay? So the next thing I do then is I wanna take and find what these values are. And for this one, it is a calculator problem. And so we go to our calculator clear anything we have in there, and we say 7 plus the square root of 13, and then divide that answer by 6, and we end up getting 1.76759187, but then we have to do the other one, 7 minus square root of 13, and then divide that by 6, and I end up getting 0.565741451. When you do get two answers, you have to do your number line test. You have to take a look at it. Now, you know that you cannot have a volume less than zero, so you could start it like that. I'll just say 0.57 here and 1.77 over here. And then I'm going to test some values, like maybe one half, one, and two. Okay, and what I have to do is I have to plug them into, well, I really plug them into this entire thing. I could either plug it into this here with the 12s. I could plug it into this here. Um, any of those, you know, will work. I'm going to go ahead and do the one with the 12s up here, and I want to show you um, something. Notice my last answer was this 0.567 that's here. I'm not going to quite use that because I know if I plug that in, it's going to give me zero. But what I do need to do is I need to plug a one half in. So I'm going to put in 0.5 and put it into the brain of my calculator, what like we talked about the other day. And I see I'm going to have to plug three numbers in. So this is a good time to use this second answer situation. I'm going to type this in as 12 times second answer squared. And then minus 28 times second answer. And then finally plus 12. And when I do, I end up getting a one here, so this section is positive. But now what I wanna do is I wanna plug this one in. So I put one into the brain, and then I go up and I grab this guy and pull him down, and it's gonna put that one back into that same formula. 
it gives me a negative four. So I know this is negative. And then the last one I was going to plug in was a two right here. And so I put the two in the brain of the calculator, go up and grab that guy. And it gives me a four, which is positive. So I'm looking for the largest volume. So this guy right here, because it goes from plus to minus, this is my, my maximum. Um, this is the X value that I want to use. X is 0.57. But then in order to get the other dimensions, I need three minus two times X. And I need four minus two times X. Now, remember, that 0.57 was in the brain of my calculator right up, doo, 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 doo. right there he is. So just bring him back into the picture. So now 3 minus 2 times second answer, that gives me 1.86851092, which is approximately 1.87. And then I need to do it here too. Four minus two times. I can't say second answer because it would put that in. Instead, I'm going to go up and grab this guy. So learn to use your calculator, you know, um, and, and its functions. And it will save you a lot of time. All right, so this here comes out to 2.87. So my dimensions are 0.57 feet by 1.87 feet by 2.87 feet. Okay, so hopefully that there helped you guys on that one. That one was more difficult because it did not factor for you and it became a calculator problem. Okay. All right, next, it says, find the point x, y on the graph of y equals the square root of x nearest to the point four zero. Even though this was on um, day, well, was it on day one of the test? No, it was actually on the quiz. And so I really wanted to um, mention something about this right here. Um, I'm going to show you partway through the problem, an, um, an algebra mistake that a few of you made. In fact, many of you made. Some of you made it through your mistake and some of you did not. So that's why I wanted to, um, you know, go over this one. So for this one here, this is where we have two points. We have the point four zero that they gave us. And then we have the point X and then whatever this is, square root of X. It's X, Y, but Y is the square root of X. And it, it's in that situation where you have this and you want to know the point four zero, which point on this graph is closest to it. And we don't know that point. And so in place of the Y, then we plug the square root of X in. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the distance between these and then find the derivative of it to find the minimum distance. All right, so here we have our distance formula, which is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And here's the mistake that some of you made. You didn't simplify this. When you take and simplify that, the square root of x minus 0 is just the square root of x, and the square root of x squared is just x. So depending on the quiz you had, some of you had like 2 rad x that was being squared. You should have taken 2 rad x times 2 rad x and gotten 4x. Because then your work after that, when you go to find the derivative of 4x, it's just 4. Just like the derivative of x, it's just 1. And what some of you did is you had this 2 rad x or 5 rad x or whatever, depending on the class that you're in and what form you had, um, some of you then got messed up on that and it threw off the rest of your problem. All right. From here, um, you want to then, I, I then rewrote it without, let's see, I did this. I wrote it without the square root and wrote it in this form so that it was ready for me to take the derivative of it. So here we go. The derivative of this, the one half comes out front and knocks down by one. So it becomes a negative one half. But what's on the inside stays the same. 
But then you peel that outside layer away and you multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of this is two times x minus four to the first. Derivative of the inside is one. And then the derivative of x is just plus one. And then let's clean this up. D prime equals, the two is in the denominator, the one's in the numerator, and then this is in the denominator and I change it back to a square root. And then this is all in the numerator. It's two x minus eight plus one, which is two x minus seven. So there is my derivative cleaned up. Take and set it equal to zero, and that's where the numerator equals zero. So x equals seven halves. And so I have to then go and plug it back in to this point right here. I got my x value is seven halves. My y value is the square root of seven halves. And you can just leave it like that. You do not need to change it and put it um, as a decimal in any way. All right. Um, also, let me point out to this one here. You know, I didn't do my number line test right here, but had I done it, it would have come out because we want to find the minimum distance. It would have been minus plus showing me that that's a minimum. But when you only end up getting one number, you don't have to worry about doing that step. All right, and then finally, the last one here, a cylindrical can. So I start with my picture of my cylinder. R and H will hold 20 pi cubic meters. Well, let's see, volume equals the area of the base times the height, and they're saying the volume is 20 pi. And hopefully at this point, you've done enough of these to know you're gonna end up getting H by itself here. I'm gonna divide both sides by pi R squared. The pi's cancel, I get 20 over R squared equals H. And then it says the material for the top and the bottom costs $10. And that might be confusing to you. And the material for the sides costs $8. Well, what they're referring to here is the surface area. So first think of the surface area. The top and bottom, you have two circles. So you have two pi r squared. And then you have the sides here, which are two pi r h. This is your surface area. You could plug H in for your surface area. Like so. Um, it looks like one of the R's cancels, but the other one's still in the denominator. So this is your surface area. And what you need to understand with this right here is this here was your top and bottom. And these here are referring to your sides. So if you want to come up with a cost formula right here, actually it should be C of R since I'm using R. It says the top and bottom is $10 for the area for each square meter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 10 times that top and bottom. And it costs $8 for the sides. So $8 for the sides. So they're just putting a little twist on your formula here, which quite honestly, I would simplify before I take the derivative. When I multiply these, I get 20 pi r squared plus 320 pi over r. All right, that is what we want to minimize the cost of, right? It says find the radius and height for the most economical can. That means the lowest price. And so I'm going to find the derivative of this cost function. I end up getting 40 pi r, and then for this one, minus 320 pi r squared over r squared and set it equal to zero. Remember this here is 320 pi r to the negative first. So when you take the derivative, negative 320 pi r to the negative second, and then I just put it back here. All right, so setting it equal to zero, four pi r equals 320 pi over r squared. Multiply both sides by r squared, 40 pi r cubed equals 320 pi. 
divide by 40 pi. So I get r cubed equals 8, and then take the cube root of both sides, r is 2. So these were measured in meters, so the radius is 2 meters, so that's one of my measurements. But I also need the height, and you might see that here, I have the height is 20 over 2 squared, so the height is 5. meters. All right. So there you have it. I hope that helps you on this. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow in class and we will go over your day two of your test review. Have a great day, everybody.